Välkomna hit allesammans. Då var det dags för ännu ett meetup på East Sweden Game. Kul att vi är så många idag. Det var ju ett tag sedan vi hade meetup nu så det är otroligt roligt att se att ni hittar tillbaks efter flera dagars uppehåll. Jag vill också uppmana alla till, alla till att hjälpa oss att dela den här streamen. Vi streamar ju nu va? Vi är live. Så ta fram era mobiler, dela så att så många som möjligt får tillfälle att se den här fantastiska föreläsningen. Jag tänkte inte göra någon jättelång introduktion utan du får presentera dig själv. Så en applåd för Jana Palm. Hej, jag heter Jana Palm och jag kommer från Tjeckien och jag har varit i Sverige i sex år, nästan sex år. Så jag är inte så bra på att prata svenska så jag ska prata på engelska. Hoppas det är okej okay för er alla. Uh, but super cool to, to be here in uh, Linköping. I've actually never been here. I've passed through uh, Linköping uh, with, a, with a train. Um, but uh, it's cool to be here and uh, also see Sweden, East Sweden game and uh, meet all of you guys. I'm very excited about, about that. Um, so I'm going to talk today a little bit about um, the things I do and uh, how I see that uh, that could be helpful for, for you guys uh, uh, if you're making games. So short about me, my name is Jana Palm and uh, I, I have three hats on me at the moment actually. Uh, so my, I think my primary hat that I, I like to see is uh, Stugan. I don't know if you've known, anybody knows who Stugan, what Stugan is? Some of you know, good. Um, so yeah, so and uh, then I work at Sting, which is an incubator in uh, in Stockholm. Uh, it's a business incubator that's been around for, I think, 15 years. And uh, approximately two years ago, we started a games part of the incubator, uh, and we now have three game companies uh, in the incubator that we're working with. And uh, um, it's very very exciting to. Uh, to work with uh, startups there, I think. Uh, and then my third and newest hat uh, is uh, Invest Stockholm, also known as Stockholm Business Region. And uh, there I work on a project which is financed by the EU and uh, it's called the Baltic Sea Region. Uh, so we have partners from all over the Baltic Sea Region and uh, we work on uh, trying to improve the framework conditions for, for game companies in Sweden. And uh, we focus primarily on uh, financing, uh, so both public and uh, private fi financing so that it's easier for game companies to, to raise, uh, raise money. And then in my free time, I like to uh, be in, uh, in juries of different game competitions. Uh, I think that's a really fun, fun thing to, uh, to get my hands on as many games as, as I can and uh, learn uh, different game dev developers and, uh, and try ex exciting new games. Um, so, yeah, let me start with asking you a few questions. How many of you love games? Good. And how many of you are making games? Good. So basically everybody here. And how many of you started making games because you love playing games? Okay. So I guess approximately half of you. I think I when, in my experience, the most people who are working in the games industry, they have very different story of how they got into the game industry. Uh, some people are are have a game education while some people have doing have been doing something completely different like for example me i i don't have a games education at all i actually studied languages and literature and history and uh, i thought that was fun but then i i've always have been very passionate about about games so i ended up working with uh, with games but i think nobody really started making games because they thought that was a great business opportunity Anybody here wants to prove me wrong? Okay, good, nobody wants to prove me wrong. Um, I think that, um, I had a thought there that I forgot, I'm sorry. I'm gonna just have to look here. Yeah, um, many indies are very, are incredibly passionate about uh, making games, um, but Um, but uh, everybody at some point has to make the decision if you want to make this as a as your career or if you want to keep this as a as your hobby. And uh, 
I think both are perfectly fine. Like you can make games as a, as a hobby. There's no nothing wrong with that. But if you do choose to have your game development as your way of uh, in, uh, ensuring you have uh, money to, to live on, uh, then you need to really think about how you're going to find the, the players who are going to play your game and how you're going to get your game to them. When I meet um, game developers, often they work alone on their games and uh, they, they feel like they sometimes they get a little bit lost because you kind of lose uh, track of what you're doing, you lose your motivation. And it's hard to work on your own. I, I know that myself, I often I, I sit alone and work. And uh, you don't have to be alone. Even though you work on your game alone and you feel like that's, that's fine, there is still a lot of ways where you can get help. And uh, that's something that I'm going to be focusing on today a lot. How you can use the community of other game developers in order to get help with your, with your game. So first of all, you can join communities and hubs, like for example, East Sweden Game, where you come and uh, you hang out and you meet other game developers. And just being together side by side is very valuable because you you can share you can share your knowledge and uh, play each other's games and uh, and really get a lot of help that way. Um, you can also join incubators or accelerators. That's fine too. There is uh, many different programs uh, around here in Sweden, around the world. Uh, you can choose the best that that works best for you. Um, they have often very different, uh, very different offers. Just looking at Sting and Stugan, where I work, they're both very, very different. Uh, while Sting is business oriented, we focus very much on business. We basically spend minimum time on helping people with the production while uh, we at Stugan we basically focus mo mostly on the on the game development and the joy and, and the creativity. Um, you can also attending events like this is also great because you can meet other other game developers network uh, you never know who's going to attend the event and uh, just uh, try to meet as many people as many people as possible that is always uh, always very good and uh, also going be present on social media is very very useful as well there is different groups on facebook for example where uh, like the indie game developers or something is called there is tens of thousands of uh, people and and uh, people are very active when somebody stumbles upon something they just post a comment or a question and there is always like dozens of people answering and trying to trying to come up with a solution so all those things could be really helpful um, you can also find a publisher that is going to help you with uh, they have also very different offers but help you with marketing and uh, things how you're gonna get your game uh, to as many people as possible is that's very useful because usually when you're working on your game and you have no experience with that it's really hard to to do that on your own and uh, also joining a co-working space like like here uh, can be really good because uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit er later as well. But often people sit alone at work, uh, at home, working on their games, and uh, and as I said, it's very easy to lose uh, your focus and uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, struggle continuing forward. What I want to focus on most today is Stugan because I think that's a great example of how people from all over the world come together and uh, people with different experience and how they can help each other and how that can change, uh, actually change your life and change really help with your, uh, with your game. Um, so what is Stugan? Uh, I'm going to run quickly through this. Um, it's a Swedish non-profit accelerator. Uh, we started four years ago and uh, the whole idea is for people from the game industry to give back and uh, help new talents get into the industry as well and, uh, and support them. Um, we run during the summer only, so for two months um, during the summer and uh, every time we have 20 to 25 game developers from, from all over the world. Um, like for example, last year we had uh, we had people from I think 16 different countries and, and we re really try to get a good diversity when it comes to uh, the countries but also uh, genders, people uh, with different experience, um, 
people with uh, yeah different background and uh, also uh, good diversity, a good range of different different games. And during the summer, we invite mentors to just to come to help people with with their games. Um, one thing that uh, we when we started Stugan and before we uh, came up with with the name, we were really um, trying to come up with the with the best name, and uh, we were really we spent a lot of time thinking about the name um, because we we felt like that's something that's going to be label of the project, and everybody's gonna be everybody around the world. That was our goal from the day one to make this international. Everybody's going to be pronouncing this name, so we were thinking it has to be something that's easy to pronounce. Yet we wanted to uh, to be a Swedish word, um, so something that sounds very exotic to everybody, but still it's easy to easy to pronounce like Stugan. Um, the first, now people kind of know how to pronounce it, but the very first year we got the applications, people were, it was very funny to see how they were pronouncing the, the name Stugan. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that actually. Um, so after a lot of thinking, we, we came up with the name Stugan. And uh, the funny thing is that it's a throwback to uh, first uh, Swedish commercial computer game made back in the 70s. And it was made by three uh, kids. They were like 13 at that time. And uh, one of them is now a professor at the KTH, uh, the Royal Institute of, Te of Technology in, uh, in Stockholm. Uh, Viggo Kahn is his name. And uh, uh, we know him and we talked to him and uh, we talked to him about the project. We told him uh, that we would like it to be called Stugan and he uh, he agreed, and uh, that's why uh, we we chose the name. And then he even came as a mentor the the first year and and uh, saw it on his own eyes. Um, I talked. This keeps sorry about that. Keeps moving. Um, I talked about different uh, programs, different incubators, accelerators um, that there are around the world, and uh, you can really choose one that that uh, that you find more uh, most. Uh, useful for you. Um, when we came up with the concept, we were looking, uh, of course, how we're going, going to finance this, because that's a, that's a question number one when you're trying to do something. How are you going to get the money to do that? Um, we looked at other similar programs that we knew of, and uh, we saw, we tried to figure out how they finance their, uh, their organization. And, and many of them, they get their money by taking a part of the companies that go to the program. And uh, in our point of view, in at Stugan, we, we thought that, that that comes with a few problems. First of all, people already need to have a company when they apply to such program. And uh, we didn't want people to, we, we didn't feel that was necessary. Also, people are sign up and show some commitment even before they get something out of it. Um, and also the focus becomes very much on the economy. How do you make a game that becomes successful? How do you build a growth company that, get, that gets a lot of revenue and you get your, your money back? And games, as you know, are so hit-driven, it's very hard to predict, ga predict uh, if the game is going to be a hit or not. So uh, we decided not to do this. We decided not to take any part of the companies and uh, just focus on what we thought is the most fun, just the joy of game development and the creativity. So how do we finance this? Um, this is a picture from the first uh, year of um, fundraising dinner. We're doing that every year. We gather people from the game industry, uh, people who have become successful and have uh, have uh, an interest in giving back and uh, we told them about Stugan and uh, many of them really liked the idea and they kindly uh, became our sponsors and uh, we've had a few sponsors that are the same people from uh, from the year one and we're super grateful to them uh, and every year we have some new sponsors as well so that's the majority of uh, of uh, the money we get. Uh, we also, the municipality of Falun, where we run Stugan, they also uh, give us some uh, support there as well, which is very, uh, very important as well. Um, but yeah, so basically, 
As I said, we don't take any uh, equity in the in the companies. People don't need to have a company. Uh, we don't take any part of the of the games either. Um, so that really allows us to focus on uh, helping the teams for for the limited amount of time for the two months without any further commitments. And uh, we're that really allows us to bet on games that are very daring, that are edgy in some way, uh, that are very unique. Um, games that most publishers would probably not really, or investors would bet on. But that doesn't mean that the game is not going to become successful. On the contrary, um, many games, for example, look at Minecraft, uh, when the Marcus per Persson notch pitched uh, Minecraft in an early stage to to investors, nobody really believed this would this would become a hit, and uh, then in the end, it, it it kind of did, right? So uh, that really allows us to to see what what people can give them the opportunity and see what they are capable of creating. Um, from the very beginning, we thought that uh, it's very important to to keep this as a open o project, open to international people, and. Uh, the first struggle the first year was how do we reach out to a global audience? How do we get people to apply? And uh, the first year we worked a lot with PR. We have a very, uh, very good uh, PR guy from, uh, from Texas, from the US, who's been working with us and he's been doing magic for us. Uh, the first year especially he managed to get the article about us in all the big uh, news uh, around the world and that really allowed us to get a lot of application and to, to se select the best, best participants. And since then, uh, the word has been spreading kind of organically. We have approximately 20 people every year and uh, we've done it three, t three times now. So we have uh, almost 70 people now or 70 o over 70 even maybe, 70 alumni who's been spreading the word and uh, tweeting a lot about that. And one of the reasons why we want a lot of attention to Stugan is to help the teams as well. Because you, when you make a game, as you know, you need the audience, you need the players who are, who's going to find your game. Because there are so many games that are being launched every day and uh, it's really hard to get through the noise and uh, find your players. So we felt like if there is attention to the project, that means there is more attention to the, to the games that are being made there. We run Stugan in a in a forest in the middle of nowhere, which which, which is approximately uh, three hours from Stockholm in the municipality of Falun. And uh, we, from the beginning, we wanted this to be an isolated place uh, with a lake, with a forest, with basically nobody but us, and uh, but also high speed internet. That was very important, um, and. We kind of wanted to show that location is not really the most important thing when you when you're making games. Sweden is has a really growing and very successful games industry, um, but when you are not based in Sweden or some other country which is uh, successful with games, um, doesn't mean that you are you have no chance in uh, succeeding. A um, lot of people might feel like they're less fortunate because they're, they're not in one of these countries. Um, but it's really, game development is so democratic. Basically all you need is to have a computer and internet and you can learn uh, how to make a game and you can make a great game and ship it to, to a global audience as well. Um, like for example, two examples, Flappy Bird and Kingdom Rush, which were developed in uh, Vietnam and Uruguay. Those would not be, you wouldn't put these two countries on a, like a top 10 list uh, with the uh, most successful game industry. And they became global hits as well. The most important thing is to think globally from, from day one. And uh, then you can, you can make great, great games. At Stugan, um, one thing that is very important and has been a really crucial part of the project is that you are never alone there. Even though we have people who, the, twen the group of the 20, 25 people is, distrib is t distributed to teams of one to three people in each team. So there is some solo game developers. There's always somebody there who is happy to, to help and uh, 
talk to and uh, play your game. And I think that's a really crucial part to, to game development, to have somebody who you can uh, talk to, bounce ideas and, uh, and just get some feedback. And also one thing I, I wanted to mention is that um, it's, it's been a really big challenge, especially in the beginning, how, how you put a group of people from all over the world, from different countries together, and uh, how do you make sure that they, they can communicate and they understand each other and that it actually works. Um, because it's very different, you know, people are very different if they are grown up, uh, grown up in uh, Asia or if they're gr grown up in Europe or South Am America. Um, there could be some cultural differences. Um, but what we learned actually is that's actually not really true. People are so nice and friendly, and uh, everybody just hung out and uh, and had a really really good time in the in the end. I don't know if you know this film, The Cabin in the Woods, which is a it's a horror film about a bunch of young people going into a cabin in the woods and then uh, scary things start to happen, and. Uh, this, by the way, is like a film that every year people watch because they feel it's it's funny that they're in the cabin in the woods. Um, and but that was the film that I had uh, in my mind, like the first night before before Stugan happens, because of the reasons uh, people from all over the world together and uh, for for two months that could be really scary. Even with your best friend, you can start arguing after after quite a few days. But uh, as I said, we've actually never really had any any problems. People just try to embrace it and uh, try to use use it to, to for the best. One thing that I think is important is that um, when you work on, on your game you you want to you don't want to lose your focus because sometimes or I've heard it happens quite a lot when you are working alone then you kind of lose inspiration and you feel sometimes like this is going nowhere and what what am I doing like how how do I get back to the track and we were thinking in the beginning if we should help people at Stugan with that if we're if we need to kind of help them steer their way and uh, and try to help them focus on their on their games um, but we actually never really had to worry about that um, the finding of the motivation kind of came naturally for them they were um, they felt like seeing other people working hard and like making progress with their game was really something that they they felt like they want to also keep working and make make progress. We didn't have any we don't have any office hours during Stugan. People are free to work anytime they like. Uh, game developers often have very different schedules. Some people like to work in the night and then uh, sleep until af the afternoon. Some people like to work regular hours. Um, and we felt like that's fine. People can work anytime they they want. Uh, anytime they feel like they're productive, they should they should do that. And uh, that's something that uh, we've seen a lot as well in Stockholm. In the incubator, we also run a co-working space, and uh, that for me it was very important that that's open for 24/7, so people can be there anytime, any day, uh, and. Uh, just work whenever they feel like. Having said that, we also try to encourage people not to crunch and not to uh, work too hard, but really find a good balance between the work life and then also having fun and hanging out with the other people and enjoying the nature, uh, because that's what it's all about. We do we don't want people to to burn out and and, and work too hard. Uh, that's that's never never good. One important thing is you play test you do a lot of playtesting with your game a lot of people work on their game and then uh, they feel very cautious about showing the game to somebody because they feel, feel it's not ready yet um, but we encourage people to to really show your game early on and uh, and uh, get feedback because it's there's no point in spending time working on a game for years without getting some feedback and then in the end finding out that the game actually doesn't work, people don't actually like it. So it's much better to show your game early on, get feedback and then adjust the game accordingly so you don't waste your time on doing something that nobody's gonna like in the end anyway. It's I've seen that people really need to take the first step and uh, and dare to do that and then it's easier. But uh, 
taking the first step could be could be really hard. But that's also what uh, communities like this can really help. Um, organizing playtesting together so it's not just you but it could be a few different game developers together and then inviting a, uh, a few playtesters and uh, it's not just the focus doesn't become just on your game but there is more more other people as well that could be a good way to start um one thing that we tried to introduce was uh, Friday sessions, is that every Friday three teams would stand up and uh, they would take approximately 30 minutes and talk about their game and then uh, the rest of the group would listen and then try to come up with solutions and, uh, and give some feedback. And uh, that's something that has worked quite well uh, some years, while some years it doesn't really work because every group is so different the group dynamics is so individual that uh, what works one year as for the whole group doesn't really work the next year each group like to do different things to in their free time or they like to they have they have different habits in working uh, one year uh, one group came up with the idea to have stand-ups in the morning so everybody in the morning before they start working they would just say Today I'm going to do this, and yesterday I, I wanted to do that, but that didn't really work out so well, or, or it did, like just keep an uh, update for, for everybody. And uh, that didn't really, nobody, last uh, like the year after, nobody really wanted to do that. Uh, so it's very different, and, uh, and it's good not to force anybody to do things that they don't want. It's, uh, for us, it's most important that they like what they're doing, and that it they th they feel like it brings value to them. It wouldn't be make sense if we tell them you have to you have to do that. And one thing also that is really cool is that people spontaneously organize workshops. They feel like they have something to teach the other people, something that they know and the other people might not know. And they say, I'm going to teach you today at five. I'm going to be here and I'm going to show you how to do this in Unity or how to do how to do like how to edit photos or or things like that. And uh, other people are very eager to, to learn and, uh, and come and, and uh, hang out. When we select the participants, we really try to get people with different backgrounds. Like last year, for example, we had uh, a person who was doing films and he was collecting awards for his last film while at Stugan and now he's already collecting awards for his, uh, for his game. Uh, so we really try to get multi-talented people there and that way everybody really has something to contribute with and has something to say. Somebody knows some something. Everybody knows something that the other people don't know. And then we bring mentors, um, which is also an important part of Stugan. Uh, we try to get people with different areas of expertise, different skill sets, so they can help the teams with different things. Uh, usually the mentors open with a presentation for everybody and then spend more time one-on-one -on -one with the teams. And uh, that's where you usually get the most value because you get 30 minutes with a person and then they can play your game and then they can tell you what you should improve, what you should do better or what you should change. Um, and that's usually very, very appreciated. And then in the end, we have a demo day in Stockholm um, where everybody, is, uh, everybody who wants it's open for public and everybody can come and, and play the games and see what's been uh, brewing at Stugan for the, for the summer. And uh, yeah, as I said, an important thing is to, to balance your work and, uh, and having, having fun. These are some of the mentors that uh, we've had at Stugan. We also try to get a good diversity when it comes to mentors, not only the uh, area of, of expertise, but also different genders. And uh, that's something that's very important for me personally. Um, and we're working hard on, 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 on that. And then one thing that we also try to get um, that we feel like that also helps increase the visibility and uh, more people following the project is that we're uh, trying to video document it. So we every year we have a person who, who is on location and who's making the videos for us and then putting it on YouTube and, uh, uh, and just so people can see what's, what's happening at Stugan. And uh, some people even make their own blogs and uh, they post it online and so that people can follow and that's that's cool too i think um that's another way for for people to big to build their community and uh, find their followers and uh, and the future players 
So we try to encourage that as well. Um, these are some of the previous games that we've had at Stugan. Um, you might know uh, Goner, that's a Swedish game uh, from Ditto. He was uh, actually in Karlshamn. And uh, these are the games that have been released so far, and there is a few actually missing. I have to update that slide. But um, when the games or the teams come to Stugan, they are in different stages of development of the games, so it usually takes a different amount of time for them to, to finish the game. Sometimes it happened once so far, people would finish it at Stugan, in the end of Stugan, but usually it takes up to, I don't know, a few years for them to, to finish the game. Um, sometimes they the game is never get finished, but that's unfortunately the way it is. But that's fine too. Um, people learn something and they uh, they get uh, some value out of Stugan anyway. So to summarize it a little bit, um, it's very important to, uh, to meet other game developers and uh, if you have the opportunity, like you're here already at the, at the meetup, which is a great step, and uh, just join a community and uh, hang out with other game developers online or preferably even in person and uh, try to learn something from, from them. Because everybody, every single person knows something that you don't know. Um, so try to really use that and uh, build relationships and, uh, and uh, get help with your game that way. That's it for me. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll be happy to answer questions if you have any. Hur ser det ut med bolag? Får man komma dit som ett, ett bolag redan så här färdigstartat? Ja, yeah. um, that's fine. You can come in as a company as well. Uh, we don't really care about that. Uh, we're fine with uh, just individuals or people who don't have a company and don't have the ambition to build a company. Uh, but if you are a company, uh, that's fine. The only kind of restriction is that we want people to be... Uh, small teams so in the first year we said one to three people in a team but then we said you can be more people but only up to three people at Stugan at a time so you can swap places uh, we just want the core part of the team to be at Stugan so it's not you know 20 people somewhere and then they send one person to Stugan um, do you choose groups yourself or uh, and uh, do you work on a new game uh, while being at Stugan? Or can you bring an uh, existing project? So basically, people need to apply to, to be a part of Stugan and they need to send us a short video uh, where they introduce the team and the game. Uh, so they are applying already as, the, as a ready team and already with the game that they want to work on. Um, we don't want people to send us uh, just an idea on a paper. We want to see already some uh, code, some part of the gameplay. So those are the only restrictions. Like we want games in all stages of development, but not just an idea on a paper and not a finished game. So anywhere in that between those two boundaries is fine. What are you looking for, like, when someone applies? Uh, what are you, like, watching for? Uh, is it more the project or the person? or? It's a mix. Uh, we, When we go through the applications, we, we really try to, and selecting the participants, we try to get a good and diverse group. That's a very important part. And uh, But the diversity applies both to the games and uh, the people so people with different different backgrounds different countries um, different experiences but also the games they have to be um, yeah different platforms there is no really restrictions to it but there has to be something unique something innovative about the game um, something that preferably we haven't seen yet before so that we really can get creative and uh, edge cutting games Of the teams that you uh, invite to Stugan, how many of them are Swedish teams, contra international teams? 
It varies. So we don't have a set amount of Swedish teams that we have to take in. We basically don't have to take any Swedish teams. We'll be fine. Um, last year, we had uh, we had two, three teams, maybe. Yeah. So last year we had fifteen teams in total, and we had two, maybe Swedish teams. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. But usually it's uh, it's a we don't want only Swedish teams. We don't want teams only from one country uh, we want to have a good international spread how many uh, what do you say applicants do you get every year um, I haven't really done the statistics for this year yet uh, we have selected the participants and we're going to announce them soon but I haven't gone through all the data yet but last year it was approximately 500 people applying for the Oh really? From forty six That's a lot. Forty six different countries, which was really impressive. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's really a challenge to select the people, but also incredibly fun. But also incredibly difficult because you have to say no to so many people. And that's a really that really sucks. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Like as a way of preparing uh, anyone here who might want to apply, what is what are the most common reasons you say no to an applicant? That's a really good question. Um, so we say no to most of the applicants, right? I guess, um, and there are different reasons. Um, some people, and apart from the reasons like not really sending us a good video where they wouldn't really show the game, or the game wouldn't really be more than just an idea. Um, it's like lack of innovation, perhaps. It's a game that we've seen before many times. Um, yeah, I would say that's the the majority, the biggest uh, uh, biggest reason. Yeah, we as, and again, as I said, I, we want to have a good diverse group. Um, so that's also an important thing that we take into account when looking through the applications. Uh, what are some What are some of the projects that were really innovative innovative in your opinion that that really shown uh, in, in the aspect of what Sturgeon is looking for um, there are so m many and it's it's really hard because <sighs> trying to think of something I think like for example I, we've been talking about that game for uh, really many times but prism uh, which was made, which was the first game that was released out of Stugan. Um, that was a game that was really impressive because it was made by s one single person doing everything on his own. And uh, and there is so many that we've had so many other individuals doing every everything on their own, and uh, it's it's really cool. Last year we had, for example, uh, a really cool game that I thought was really fun. It was a VR game, and uh, it was a social VR game uh, called Puppet Fever. It actually is on uh, Steam Early Access now. And uh, it's something that, you know, VR is something that people, m most people don't really f think of as a social experience. But uh, this game, I don't know if anybody knows, but uh, it's, uh, you are, the person who plays in VR is the puppet master and trying, t it's like a charades. So in the in the game, you're trying to uh, explain a word that's in the game that you only only you see, and then the rest of the people sees it on the TV and guesses what it is. So that's actually a really cool way of using VR, I think, uh, which was a really nice, uh, nice and innovative uh, game, for example. But there's so many other games that I I, I could just continue. You know, the list goes on and on. <coughs> you, you talked a bit about diversity in the projects. That that's that's a very appreciated factor. Uh, have you had any projects working towards accessibility as a as a main focus? Yes. Um, um, let me think. It's actually very hard to uh, keep track of the games, but last year I think there was. Um, That's a really good question. I don't, I don't remember right now like a main focus of a game for the diversity. Um, not on top of my head, I guess. Yeah, there I, I'm sure there is. <laughs> I 
I think everyone is very hungry now. Yeah, fair enough. Cool. Especially me. Especially you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks.